Maybe I screwed it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. This is Ink Spots. It's been a long, long time as I uh, as I just proved that I thought I had started the stream and I didn't. I'm here with the great Rich Ayala, and I'm going to do some fan art for his wonderful comic that I'm way late coming to the game, too. I just saw it today, like went through it, saw all the cool pages, all the cool underground comic style of, of Roach Balls. Dude, it's great to meet you. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm good, brother. I'm good. I'm good. Um, thanks for inviting me and shit. It was, uh, it's pretty cool to be here. Um, it's gonna, I'm, I'm late to the game, too, as well, so I don't know if you want to call you Ink Spots or... Man, okay. just call me Ink Spots. That's my pen name. That's what I go by. Uh, my real name is Bill, but uh, Ink Spots is what everybody knows me by. And you know, I've been kicking around the game for a long time, ever since really Comicscape began. And then uh, I think yours is really the first like comic that I've seen that truly captures that underground comics feel. And dude, it's just it's an amazing book. How'd you come up with that concept? Uh, thank you, brother. Um, I didn't think uh, honestly, like um, this would have. What up, Dean? What up, Sim? Scotsman? I didn't think it would um, register as being that different for a lot of people because I've been getting that um, that same uh, I guess outlook. A lot of people have been complimenting me on, so I think that's like super cool. But um, it just how I first came up with this is uh, I don't know. It's hard to say because um, I mean I've always wanted to make comics as a kid like most of us and shit so it's been an ongoing thing through years whether you know you stop drawing and then you're back to drawing or whatnot but making a comics has always been um a thing back in the back of my head that's always like kind of pestered me and made me want to get this shit done so you know over time timing just falls into place and then you start getting shit done yeah uh, were you one of these people that have been hanging around comics gate for a while and you just now have like all right i'm jumping in there or is this like a concept you've had for a, a real long time that's just been kicking around and growing in your head? Or uh, uh, It's kind of like a, this concept has been around since forever. So I've always wanted to make comics as a kid, but then I had this concept in the early 2000s, like 2003, 2004 maybe. And um, so that's always been around, slowly working on it, working on the character, and then, um, then eventually just building his environment after that and then really settling into place. And as to coming into Comicsgate, I honestly only came into Comicsgate through during the time of the lockdown when we're all shut okay. down. Because um, I finally went through my final phase, I guess, of where I wanted to, like, this character's look and the stage and this whole environment and where the plot was going to take place. And then after I was, like, 100% confident and started that, I realized that I needed people to, you know, uh, to have eyes on this book. So... I came across Comics Gate through a serendipitous event, I guess, through the funny shit that, you know, how YouTube works when they make suggestions and whatnot. And I was watching a lot of um, artist interviews, uh, trying to watch stuff mainly with artists drawing so I could, like, kind of draw with them because I don't have a lot of homies in my personal life that draw comics, you know? Right. So, um, then I came across, I was watching a lot of cartoonists, Kayfabe, they're doing the interviews and breakdowns, and I came across Ethan Van Skyver, and I uh, thought he was pretty interesting listening to, you know, his shit. And then uh, he talked about Comics Gate, and I didn't know anything about, you know, all the bad stuff, uh, all the narratives, the whack narratives that are out there about Comics Gate. So it was like a whole totally fresh new outlook for me. And I didn't find all that negative shit till after what they're saying. So it still didn't, you know, really affect me. And I had already come across like um, dope ass streams and really awesome people that I've come into connections with and just really settled in. And I was like, all right, these are my people. These are the people that are going to like roach balls maybe not all of them but some of them will like it you know so and then it was right just on. On. yeah well this is cool for me because it's not often that i get to talk to somebody and uh I get to know them live on stream i i don't think i've ever talked to you before or, or have we ever been on streams together before i don't, I don't think so I no can't definitely anything. not um i'm still i feel like i'm still relatively new to the whole hopping on streams thing and i haven't really done this till uh uh this is probably the most i've actually been on streams since launching my campaign and then i was on a couple ones after before that mainly on the comics way and um i don't know if you catch that it's um every saturday i'm on there with uh Aerith actually just popped in the chat the homie um b rose ollie uh Owasi, you know quite a few people it's like the latin section of, of cg right. and shit but uh so i was on there before that and kind of just you know working up my streaming chops and whatnot 
and uh, so cool. here I am now, pretty much. Right on, dude. And uh, you, you know you have something when you catch the eye of EBS. That that is really cool. Uh, I I hadn't seen this yet, but all my friends were doing fan art of Roach Balls, and I'm like, <laughs> what the hell is Roach Balls? I mean, everyone's talking. And so I finally go there, and I'm just like, this is the dopest shit ever. Nice. <laughs> it's like, oh, and this is what got me. Like when I'm like, I like this dude a lot. Is when uh, I get down here, and I'm just scrolling. And I'm like, oh, this is great art. You gotta. He's trying to like get some booby man. Like, <laughs> he's mushing that baby right dude, out. Of get it. out of there. Give me some yeah. of that booby. And then you get down. You get down. You're just going. Come on, you sucker. Uh, did I pass it? It's the crack rocks. The crack yeah, rocks. It's a little bit later up. There it is. <laughs> I'm like the dude is giving crack rocks. <laughs> yeah, uh, glow I'm in the just, dark crack. Where did that I come? Swiped, uh, I swiped that idea from the homie, the big homie Matt Fowler, because of the nice. blue campaign. I don't know if you check that out. If you haven't, definitely check it out. Um, but he was um, you got little crack rocks, a uh, little glow in the dark crack rock that goes with the action figures, and they're all made by Steve Worcester. So he's the he's the chef cooking these up in his uh, in his laboratory, but uh, yeah, I saw that and I was like, these are great, you know. And I felt like they just matched the whole vibe of the campaign and uh, the whole like uh, I don't know if you want to call it brand or style or whatever you what have you, Roach Balls. So and, and everybody's and dirty, dirty rug not included. <laughs> <laughs> I see this dude and I'm like. Ah, oh, there's no cat shit stains, but this reminds <laughs> me. This reminds me of uh, my early childhood right yeah. here, dude. I'm like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> right on. And so you got the uh, the glow in the dark. No, that is special thing. Like he he makes these up, and uh, yep, he just he, has uh, his own little formula. Yep. <laughs> there's cool. a little bit of uh, toxic nuclear shit in the in the crack brew. You know, cooks it up, whips it on the Pyrex, and we distribute it. <laughs> Kidding! It's all fake. I don't no, want you no is it? Like, are you sell? Does it sell in eight balls, or it's just a you get you get like a, a couple ounces? Or? Yeah, we're just we we getting the small little oyster crackers now, and then we'll see how good <laughs> we do, and then start distributing eight balls and whatnot. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so you definitely have a unique style. This is all traditional, right? Is it yeah. ink and watercolor? Or? Uh, yeah, the the comic book itself with the pages, um, it's all ink. There is watercolor in it, so like some of the backgrounds, the panels, I'll use watercolor paints and the brushes like that. The bigger panel, yep, or the bigger backgrounds, I'll use that. And then for a lot of the layering and the grimy, like drips and grime and uh, schmegma and what have you, that's like um, paint, watercolor pen, like pens, the uh, brush pens and shit. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so nice. it layers nice on top of the Prismacolor markers, which is a majority of the work and the colors. It's all markers. Dude, it's it's beautiful. The aesthetic of the whole thing is just it's so fun, and the fact that you do it uh, traditional adds to just it adds to that grit and that underground feel. So great, dude. That yeah, I'm a digital colorist, but this this is what you did like by hand. That's definitely the way to go. It just uh, yeah, it was it was the only way I could really complement and just kind of like I attempted to do this comic beforehand in black and white, and then one with just like minimal gray scale, and then before that I attempted um the digital approach on Procreate, and uh, it looked cool. I could do shit like the most thing I like was that like the Gaussian blur where it could make it look like the fist is moving fast. So on computer, oh, yeah. there's some cool like next level shit that you can do. Yeah, but hitting overall, that motion just, blur and stuff. Right. Yeah, that shit is cool. But overall, there it just didn't. Um, I didn't feel the vibe of it, so I was just like, "Nah, I have to do this like medium, like a special certain medium style." Like um, like the other day, I was actually watching uh, Zade um comics, and he was like doing the um, he gave the comic a shout out too. But he was doing a quick review of the Beavis and Butthead arcade game, and they yeah. were showing clips of the cartoon. And even the cartoon, you see the colors like the colors are all kind of faded looking, and they look grimy and shit. So yeah. you know, old school cartoon. So I was like, yeah, I did right by taking this approach because I don't think uh, you would have just got it. You know, it wouldn't have looked as natural, or organic with computer. Now, are you hitting it with uh, a crow quill, or are you are you using microns, or what kind of? Uh, yep, what are you microns. Using? The microns, okay. Faber Castell. All right, nice. Yep, yep. You like what? What's the, what size is your go to size? In that oh room? man, I you I got the fat boy fucking bundle, so I'll use. Uh, everything actually from the xs to all the way to the big brushes like the fat boy ones 
Okay. And so like See? I'll use a lot of my lettering and shit. So I'll um I'll do a lot of my lettering by hand. So Ooh, like nice shit. Uh, the small chisel chip uh, tip and shit. So are you gonna do it a uh, paste up on your lettering? You're gonna like and then like scan it in or you gonna no no just right, right on the paper the, no paste right up. in the artwork and yep, do you right have an original art tier on here yep so those are all they were all 11 by 17s those the black and white ones on the comic book art boards and uh those were all homages and shit and those sold out this past weekend yo <laughs> what's, what's up that? brother <laughs> that just uh i just put up some uh, the smaller ones that you saw right there the small a4 size those were keyframe shots that I had drawn up specifically for the video. And mm -hmm. I did those with the homie um, Dying Days of YouTube. And so those were cool. And I put those up and those got those were gone quick. Yeah, Matt's one of the ones that I've seen his Roach, Bar, Roach, Roach Balls fan art. I'm like, dude, what is this? I got to go. I got to <laughs> go actually go to this and check out the pages. <laughs> That's uh, the fan art stuff. That is honestly something I was not expecting. So like with the whole campaign, like there's been a lot of unexpected shit happening <laughs> with this way it's all good believe me it's all good but i like uh kind of i guess i like set myself for the lowest like uh i don't know how to ex i don't know how to, the right words to use it but i didn't expect too much i expected enough but not too much so with all this crazy beautiful fan art and the way the campaign is doing it's definitely uh surprising yeah it's amazing funny dude people are just <clears throat> it's just resonating you know yeah. Well, look at this giant actions. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna solo it so you can see this. This giant act action scene where he's just like going into the dump and he's. What are these creatures, by the way? There's they're like squeaky toy squeaky toy bang in there. Yeah, they're pretty much like the the indigenous wildlife, so to speak. So they're like uh, weird little rodent parasite things, and they just they're just all over the place. You know? Squeak, squeak, squeak. Yeah. Just, I, want, that's, I, I want like little plushies of those made you know if I yeah yeah them. i've had uh i've had so many good ideas that was definitely one of them so it's like uh i definitely want to <laughs> do you something know, with you, know, the that you, you squeeze it looks like a clown and you squeeze it and it's eyeballs yeah oh yeah that would be great but with your with your little guys when you like squeeze them yeah like little yeah. squeaky toys that like yeah you squeeze them and they like pop out and they yeah, yeah they're, like they're, little fake guts pop out of its mouth yeah. or something. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea dude oh yeah there's like so many cool toy ideas i want to when you hit shit, your but... next campaign you can do something like that or oh, add yeah. a stretch goal or but i love how he's like he gets dumped out of the dumpster and the, all these pages is just you can follow the action as he and then he spins through the air yeah, it was like a hard time trying to figure out like how I should start off the comic because I don't write down all my stories like the Marvel method way and like I just write down and jot down ideas and characters on cue cards and just kind of like pick them out, you know, and then just let the story go from there. So um, yeah. when I first I had this idea of him getting dumped out of a, a dump truck in a tall ass like long stacked up landfill and then it was just. I couldn't get it out of my head and I'm sitting there like late at night trying to think of shit and then I just got up and went right to the desk and started penciling that out and then it was just all from there. And like the way you did this car, it's like it and then with the watercolor, it's giving me like far side, you know, yeah. like the colored far side strips that he used to uh, Larson used to do. It's got that cool vibe to it. It's so great. Uh so what were some of your artistic influences? I mean what uh what kind of style or uh, other comic book artists did you kind of follow? See, like, uh, past couple times I, I've mentioned names and then I think about it and there's, like, so many other people and so many styles. It's hard to, like, really, like, pinpoint because, like, I mean, Sully himself is a mix of so many characters. But, like, art style, I'd have to say, uh, like, Bisley, Giffen, uh, okay. Crumb, Bakshi. Yes, uh, Crumb. Oh, yes, yeah, Crumb. especially I love Crumb. Crumb. You know? <laughs> I, I like Jeff Darrow, uh, Frank Miller, their whole style, not even just art, but just style and aesthetics that they yeah. set with the environment is just straight up grimy. And you can't trust nobody. <laughs> it's like no yes. heroes. Um, and then there's like uh, Matsumoto, who, uh, he's a manga artist, but his style is so mm -hmm. different where it's not like manga at all. Like it's almost like borderline like Bisley when he did that, I don't give a fuck sketchy style. And okay. um his whole but the thing is too like he had such thin lines but they held so much weight so like that was a big inspiration especially like the way giffen did his shit 
when he was working on Trencher or some on of Trencher, yeah. Runs. yeah. Like his a lot line, of people he, hate that stuff, but I yeah, loved do. it. Yeah. I loved it, and I really loved Trencher. She was yeah, me too. I watched a review where somebody was like, "This is <laughs> vomit <laughs> on paper. <laughs> this is cute," and I'm like, "I loved it." <laughs> oh wait, no, Trencher, dude, I like Trencher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like it was really. That crazy. I, I just had to. I just had to be the the odd man out and be like, hey, "Fuck that shit." I hate and then that. As soon as stuff. I started thinking about it, I was like, "No, wait a minute. That's actually fucking rad." Yeah, <laughs> it was wild. And then uh, grew so Sergio Aragon. Oh, there you go, dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving you every second. Yeah. Like the that dude is such a nasty <laughs> cartoonist. Do you, do you like, leave, was it that comic? Uh, I've always like Gru's been around, but I didn't really appreciate it till I watched. Uh, I read um, Danger Duck, and in the back is Gru's first appearance, and uh, the it was so simple. It was like a couple panels, but Gru's like clumsily like trying to save a girl, a princess, and he slices up this dragon. It's like such a cartoony thing, but it was so yeah. well executed. And so like, detailed for yeah. a cartoony style, huh? And so smooth, like the transition and yeah. action. I'm like, Aragonis could draw the gnarliest, most violent fucking comic in the world, like. Yeah. But he doesn't, and he's just doing this, and it's still so nasty. So definitely Sergio up there is, like, a definite inspiration. I'm, like, slowly nice. collecting the Gru, um, the, the Marvel runs and shit. There's, like, 150 yeah. of them, so I'm slowly collecting that. Is there 150 of them? Holy oh, some God. shit, like, 150 or 120 of them, something like wow. that. But yeah, some of them all go, they, they did so much stuff for so many different companies, it's hard to figure out what came first yeah. and what but uh, I love this this first <laughs> his toes and everything, dude. Yeah. So you have this book. The book's done. It looks like from what I read at the bottom there. Yep, yep, all done. It's uh, pretty. I had some test runs printed out. So, uh, mm -hmm. well, I'll, I'll, oh, that's why you can see like the pages. Yeah. Thing. I'm hella scrubby right now, but I'll I'll, I'll show this shit off on camera. Okay. Give a. Uh, give the wild naps but uh yeah i had some test prints uh test prints done up because um obviously this is my first campaign and i don't want to you, you hear it and read the horror stories out there and like i'd rather be prepared i feel yeah. like preparation has been my best friend throughout all of this so uh i had these printed up so the quality would be a little bit better this is on like a softer stock paper and whatnot and then uh this is kind of like like a little bit frayed Oh, it's a big book. Dude. Yeah, nine by twelve. I want. I love the old, um, like heavy metal type style. You know, where it was like big ass. Yeah. Books and shit. And another thing that actually inspired me a lot on the um, the structure of this book I think that was, fucking story. was uh this sweet ass Mario book. Oh yeah. I remember that. I got this, uh, not this one. I had to reorder it, but years and years ago at a Walmart, I bought this book and I fucking loved it. So, like, uh, I love the whole look of it, the presentation, the cartooning style. So this was definitely, a, definitely, a, you know, an inspiration and all that an influence. Don't mind all the stuff floating around. That's not spirits. I just live in a dusty fucking apartment. <laughs> <laughs> live in the dream, bro. Live in the dream. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Dude, that's it. Looks great, man. Yeah. And so, you, so, like, so how many? You, this is just your test print run. Yeah. So uh, for those that got the um, the art tiers, they ended up getting these bootleg runs with it too. So the expensive art tiers. I ended up pulling up one more. So one more bootleg run will be made available when I have another art tier in a couple weeks. So you'll get that with, once you purchase that. But, cool. Um, yeah. So the quality will be better. So there'll be a high, like a better a uh, pound paper. Uh -huh. it's kind of soft so it'll be a little bit better stock it I'll looks have, good I, already man yeah yeah i'm pretty it proud of it really the resolution good. came out a little bit iffy because i sent in jpegs like a dumbass oh okay but it's still pretty solid i'm still happy with it yeah it looks good it doesn't look bad especially uh, the style that it is it, uh, it's it's not gonna hurt it exactly. uh, um, uh did are you redoing the print file and sending them some tips or are you just yep, going with yep. what you okay no no, no, no no i'm gonna send them tips because as much as i like the way it looked it could be a little bit better because i don't want to look too too old school a little yeah. bit contemporary, a little bit sharper. But other than that, like I know once I send in the text, it'll look that much better. And then this will have oh, nice, like a nice matte, like suede laminate. So it doesn't look, you know, I don't want oh, it to okay. be shiny, you know. And then, uh, like I said, the stock will be a little bit, um, a little better. So it's not too, too floppy, I guess, you know. Yeah. As much as I like the floppiness, you know, 
you got to get the the cover a little bit better, better quality. Very cool. Uh, I want to shout out to the chat because I kind of been ignoring them a little bit. Sorry, guys. I just been into this book. I just like I said, I just looked at the pages today and I was like, man, this thing is rad. Uh, so we have uh, Comics Mate there. What's up, Dean? And then you said Aerith was there. Uh, Black Rose Comics. Of course, we got Flying Feline. How are you? And Jim hey, Cox, 24 Eyes. Hey, Fanta, how's it going? Nice to see you. And then we got Sim here. He also has his book out, Tales from the Natverse 2, if you want to run over there and check that out. Hey, so it's great to see you guys. Thanks. I didn't know if anyone would come because I haven't streamed in, like, a long time. Like, a really long time. So. Hey, I'm glad that uh, I'm on it to break that streak. Then. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I used to have a weekly show, but uh, I just decided because we're uh, I'm actually launching uh, my comic uh, with Unhinged and uh, Frog G's coming out. So I want to do a lot of cross promotion and just uh, get back up and running again and uh, get back the into muscle muscles. Yep. Yeah. So let's let's uh, let's do a quick rundown of your of your uh, book here before I get started painting. And then I, there's a couple of other books in Comics Gate I just want to shout out real quick before I start painting because I don't want to stop once I get going. <laughs> so let's uh, get back to solo here. So looks like you already have 239 backers. That's rad, dude. Yeah. Wow. And boom. So we got our uh, first tier here, and what's this first one? That's just the book for 25 Yep, just the book. You get uh, a stick. I forgot, actually, what comes with that. I signed the book, and you get a glow-in-the-dark sticker. Everything is uh, glow-in-the-dark. Nice. Yeah, I, I wanted to go with the whole, like, 90s thing, because obviously the 90s, the aesthetic of the 90s, the cool shit, you know, the toy. Everything was glow-in-the-dark for me as a kid, you know. All right. You know, like, grimy shit, so Rebel cartoons and whatnot. Then you can get two books, two balls in one package. <laughs> yep. I've been, uh, that was a suggestion, and it seems like that was a really good suggestion. So I think a next uh, next Sorry. campaign, I'll probably do like a three or four type thing going on. I don't know. But, uh, great. So it looks like you're sold out on like all the other tiers are sold out. Yeah, those have been going like crazy. I do have more art tiers that will be going up. Okay. Um, for everybody out there, I'm so sorry about the email thing. I'm just getting around. Like, I just sent out the first email. I thought I was doing it correctly. And then the homie Brian was like, no, dummy, you're not. So <laughs> I just sent out an email today. So I'm going to be better on that and uh, more up to date. Now, do you have any stretch goals coming up? Yep. I just put up the first stretch goal today, actually. And you just this guy here? Bang. Yep. And so that uh, all this is, uh, you got colored pencils in this one? Or is that all just watercolor? I but I don't I'm not sure. He told me the medium. The person, the homie that did this fan art mm -hmm. was Dying Days of YouTube, who did the trailer, and has done all my promotional videos. I love that guy. I never want your let trailer him is beautiful, dude. Yeah, he did such place. a killer fucking job. And just working with him is so it's so easy. Like the guy's just on point. Like we vibe so well. Where <laughs> I feel like I don't have to say much. But he drew that a while back, and I loved it. And um, like so many dope fan arts been coming out. So it was like I'm trying to like uh break them all in but slowly but surely so i don't overwhelm myself but i felt like this one was perfect i swiped the idea from pretendals ollie and the 656 crew and brian how they were doing mm -hmm. the yeah they this make amazing perfect. art man yeah, yeah this is perfect because it's up close it looks like sully stole the camera and uh it reminds me of the whole ren and stimpy vibe when they do the yep. up close still shots and everything's just grody yeah, so, exactly. the gross yeah. he really oh, nailed it with that so i felt like all right this is a cool first stretch goal and it goes good with like look wise it goes good with everything Cool, man. Yeah, it looks great. And then let's get back up here. And you still are you going another thirty days after these eighteen days here? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay, and then you'll be in demand. So you got time to unlock some uh, some stretch goals here, yep. guys. He's I have already... other ideas too for stretch goals and shit. Like um, I wasn't sure if I just blast them all there and be like stretch goal. If we get here, if we get here, I didn't feel like that was like. Uh, a little overwhelming for me, so I, I do have ideas for next stretch goals, but I'd like to, you know, knock yeah. them off one at a time. For me, I love trading cards, dude. Yeah, I like it. I like the trading cards, so that'd be cool. A Roach Balls trading card. If well, you... the first, yeah, the first hundred they get on. Um, well, it's already past that, but the first hundred get um, handmade uh, sketch cards with little Roach oh, Facts wow. on the back. 
Nice. And then the first like 200 get something. And I'm talking to Steve right now. And at first it was going to be the first 200 that get the glow in the dark crack rocks. But I think now I'm just going to make it like every backer will get them. Crack so, rocks nice. for everybody, man. Yeah. Socialism works, people. <laughs> Hey, perfect timing, you know? You get Boy, a crack I rock, didn't... you get a crack rock, you get a used condom. It's yeah. like, hey. <laughs> when you get your crack when you get your crack pipe with your tax returns that your boy Biden's sending out, now you get Hell crack yeah. rockies with that, you know? You take whatever they'll give you guys. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I wanted to do a, a couple of shout outs here for a couple of other campaigns. Do uh, you want to stick around and talk to us for a while, Rich? And oh, yeah. Definitely. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd I want to go through yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of fun stuff going on right now. We got Matt Barr here. And uh, everybody's links are, are in the description. I got Matt Barr's Twitter. Uh, and then what I got in there, too. And I got uh, Rich's uh, Twitter and Roach Balls. And we got Rock and Roll Ninja. What is Rock and Roll Ninja about, Matt Barr? Dude, it is a cross between Apocalypse Now and Buckaroo Banzai and Ninja Scroll. Oh yeah, it's got all <laughs> kinds of. It's got a, and there's some like Wall Street thrown in there too. So yeah, dude. That, that's kind of. I'm gonna start using that instead of trying to explain the uh, the plot because it's. It's just too wild. It's like like trying to explain the, the plot to Buckaroo Bonsai. You just <laughs> it's just all over the place. But um, lots of rock and roll, lots of ninjas, and um, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now, dude. Yeah, Matt Barr is another one whose art yeah. like strikes that nostalgia. Like I see his art, and it just reminds me of like all the great art in Madden Magazine, and yeah. just his facial expressions, his line work. It's just beautiful and look yeah, at these thank you epic shots look That's at that just like killer. <laughs> tell us what kind of ninja training that assassin that fucking village <laughs> encampment yeah it's so, like these four guys who the special forces in vietnam they come back home they're playing in a band they get some of their equipment damaged you're a little low matt we can't we can't hear you very well oh shit really yeah how about now yeah, we can hear you a little better now. It's, um... Yeah, they go to this village thinking that they're going to help them in a kind of humanitarian way. And really, they, they get brainwashed and uh, end up being part of this ninja cult. Cool. Ninja and cult. Hilarity is <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> Look at this dude like... getting the knife right out of his mouth yeah. right now. <laughs> I want to be yeah, a part like of a ninja cult. So, yeah, yeah, it's it's like they're part of it, and then something goes down, and they like kind of snap out of it. Or it's like this really wide shot of um, of all these dead people, and then suddenly like a, a stereo gets turned on, and they're like listening to music for the first time in, in several years, and it kind of like snaps look at this out. like Queen action here right now. We are the champions, my friend. <laughs> That's uh, that they're they're literally playing while the uh, fire base is being mortared. <laughs> <laughs> right, Can't so get much more uh, about. rock and roll than that. <laughs> well, the the thing is, is that they um they killed the the mortared team that was there the day before. So they're like, well, these guys don't know where the fuck they're aiming at. So let's go onto the stage because they had like a USO concert going. And as soon as the mortars start striking, the, the people who were on stage like got the fuck out of there. So the, so the equipment's just sitting up there. So they, they run up there and grab it and they start fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, a, you know, there's a colonel involved and, you know, and he's. He's the one that kind of gets him involved with the ninjas. And he's fucking the ninja queen and stuff. There's a yeah. Queen. And the, the colonel uh, fakes his death. And so the ninja queen thinks that her, her lover is dead, but then finds out that he's alive and is like selling ninja secrets and shit. So, like, so not only do you have the boys who are trying to like restart their lives. 
after like escaping this ninja cult, you know, now you have like this colonel who was thought to be dead. He's he's got like a new set of ninjas out there. And he's like hiring them out to different Wall Street executives. But I, I mean, I'm just scratching this. So it's like so fucking wild. It's so fun to draw all this stuff. I'm like having a, a real blast. Oh, yeah, it looks like uh, it. Sure. All this shit. So it's an in-depth, fun story with amazing art by the great Matt Barr. It is on Indiegogo right now. It's already funded. You could still get it. Get yourself a copy. Go over, get yourself a copy of Rock and Roll Ninja. Then get yourself a copy of Roach Balls. Or get yourself a copy of Roach Balls. Then get a copy of Rock and Roll Ninja. Rock and Roll Ninja and then, Roach Balls. When you do that, you want to run over to Dan Plagle's Goblin Girl. Dan Plagle is one of the most uh, underrated, he doesn't get as much attention as he deserves, artists in Comicsgate, along with the great colorist Billy Basco. Now this Billy Basco guy, I used to be super jealous of him, man, and then he just started doing great work. He helped me on Charlie's London when I was under the gun. Now I love the guy. He's doing wonderful work along with Dan Plagle. And Goblin Girl is funding right now over there on IGG as well. You, you're going to want to get a copy of this. You don't want to miss out on it. It's got boobies. It's the, got uh, monsters. On Rock and Roll Ninja. Bill, uh, Billy's doing yeah. He's helping me on Rock and Roll Ninja as well. Yes, he yeah, is. Billy, he's, he's all over the place. And the great Matt Barr did this lettering and these cool backgrounds. Yeah, I'm going to be doing the, the lettering on the book as well. So that's, there you uh, go. Dan doesn't have to worry about the, 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 the lettering. Because I think he was going to try to do it. But I'm going to like I So yeah, this book is beautiful as well. Uh, Dan was doing the gray tones and then Billy was coloring over the top. And Billy just took it to the next level. Dan's artwork was already amazing. And then they're just one of those great collaborations that uh, knock it out of the park. Look at that. Yeah, it's a, such a cool fucking shot right there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, so it, is, it is a wild story. It is awesome. And it's not just like cheesecake, you know, titties. I mean, there's there's amazing titties, don't get me wrong, but like it's such a really <laughs> cool fantasy apocalyptic story. Yeah, Dan's got like, this thing just planned out. Shit. He knows what's going on. Beautiful. Just look at that. That is a titties. Piece. What's that? I said titties. Titties. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and every you hear the word titties, everybody take a drink. Take a drink. <laughs> then just back all this to see. There's like, we got the mainstream, and they're putting out, you know, Buffy the butthole sucker or whatever they're putting out. It looks like crap. It's boring. It looks like airplane pamphlet art. We just showed you three books that have the most amazing unique artwork you know original ideas that just put the mainstream to shame so go get these three amazing books right now they're out there they're they're already funded they're going to be put out uh for the most part uh i know all the uh pages for goblin girl are done and billy's just working on the colors so that's almost done dan's got a ton of rock and roll ninja done if not most of it done and then Rich already has this whole book done. So, hey, yeah, you, you're going to get these. You can get them now. It's going to be awesome. Uh, speaking of awesome, we got Absolute 2 by my friend Unhinged, Jason Bascom. Oh that is it's funding right cool. now. And uh, it's going to be, uh, it's already printed, and he's going to be shipping pretty soon. So you want to grab yourself a copy of that. And speaking of uh, Dan Plagle, he did... And this is a secret. Now, now that there's only a few of you in here, he re he did this ash can, and he printed it. It's a real ash can. He printed it out himself, nice. and on the back of every single ash can, let me see. I think I got a picture of it here. He drew. So you're getting an original piece of artwork on the back of wow. every single, and they're all different. Look at that. He's got Goblin Girl, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. Uh, He's got all kinds of cool stuff. He has a vampire that I saw. So so it's for 15 bucks plus shipping, you get like, this is like a $150 thing that you're getting. Like, 
for free that he drew on the back of all these books and and not very many of them are out there so it's very limited so you got if you guys want to get a great value right now go over to absolute book two and and uh, back that ash can and you're getting a lot for your money for that so it'd be a, a good deal uh, but the book itself is just really nice and uh, I drew a couple of trading cards as well as Matt Barr drew like a yeah, three piece yeah. trading card right Mm -hmm. And they all yeah, go together. Like, hey, man, could you, could you uh, do a trading card? I was like, yeah, man, just send me whatever you want, you know. And uh, he sent me some money, and I was like, holy shit, dude, I gotta get this one of my three cards. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also, if you back Absolute uh, Book Two, you get the first appearance of Frog G, which is me and Jason's. Uh, new book that we're putting out we got the sign up out right now and we'll talk about that a little bit later but you'll get the first appearance of that character uh and it's going to be you get the free trading card that you get and and speaking of what you get for free just by backing the book you get like a ton of stuff like i i think it's like nine trading cards stickers like just a ton of crap when you order this book so uh it's like getting a, a gift in the mail just full of stuff you got a great card here, painted by the great Matt Yaki. He colored it. You got Fraga there in a cage. Mm. That's <laughs> fun. So get that. Uh, let's see. Roach Ball, Stan Plagal. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, my friend uh, Sim is putting out a book. Uh, this is his second book, Tales from the Natverse. I painted the cover to it. So if you guys want to run over and grab that, this is his... Uh, He's put out uh, a ton of books, so this is maybe like his fourth book that he's put out, and he's delivered on every single one of them, so if you order this book, you're definitely going to get it, and uh, I painted the cover for it, so if you, uh, you support him, you're supporting me too, because uh, you know I do these covers to help people uh, sell their books, and if they sell their books, they hire me to do more covers, so uh, go ahead and grab a copy of Tales from the Natverse 2. how that works, right? Uh, yep, that's right, man. This might just be an opinion of mine, but I feel like you can never go wrong if there's somebody getting popped right in the fucking face on a cover. Yeah, so you can exactly. never go wrong. With that, <laughs> and then what I want to, I'm very excited about, and this is, I've been around comic skates since like the very beginning, bef like before EVS, like said, hey, I'm comic skate. I was a fan of EVS and I follow him on his channel. And ever since then, EVS actually got me started. I don't know if you knew that, Rich, but like my first work in Comic Skate, EVS actually started promoting me because I did some fan art of Rainbow Brute. And Very then cool. uh, and he got me the job over on Cash Grab for Cecil. And, and like I've been around since the beginning, but I've only been working on other people's stuff, doing covers, doing colors. I did the colors for Charlie's London. I did some of the colors for The Art of John Malin. I didn't colors for a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that hasn't even come out yet and a lot of covers but this is my very first thing that i've done myself i'm so excited uh that we got frog g and the unique thing about frog g is that it's actually frog g is like the the link master he's like in every chat posting links for people yeah. and he bought a tier on that you just saw on the unhinged 2 campaign and people like the character his original character that he came up with for his uh, trading card uh, that he paid for on that tier that they wanted to do they wanted us to do a comic they loved it and people kept saying do a comic do a comic so we came up with the story we're going to do a comic and the comic is based on a fan uh, a staple of comic skate a guy from the chat and the comic's based on him not only is it based on him he's going to get 10 percent of all the profit from this comic we're splitting him we're cutting him in because he had a great idea yeah. And uh, so Frog G. Frog, Frog G is about a, a, a normal guy that gets turned into a frog by a voodoo priestess. Then he's given a chance to become human again by death himself. Death himself comes to Frog G and says, If you kill this god and bring me back his horn, I will turn you human again. So death himself sets Frog G on a quest in the underworld to regain his humanity and get back the woman he loves. So back frog, uh, sign up for the Frog Gene mailing list right now on Indiegogo. Uh, Jason's got that that same. I, I if you notice, there's a theme here. I love like just crazy. Just I love detailed artwork. I love the old school style. 
and Jason has that underground style as well, just the scratchy, beautiful artwork. And then when I go on top of it and try to make it volumetric, I, it's like I get to paint all the backgrounds. I'm loving working on this book. So if you guys would, if you'd go over, uh, get on the mailing list. Uh, we'll be launching the campaign pretty soon, as soon as he's done fulfilling uh, 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 Absolute Book 2. So get over there and uh, and back that. So those are the books I, I want. Yeah, thank you, man. And so, uh, like I said, all these books we went through, Rock and Roll Ninja, uh, Frog G, Goblin Girl, Rich's Roach Balls, mm. Absolute Book 2, Tales from the Natverse, all the links to the campaigns as well as to everybody's Twitter are in the description. If you get in there and, uh, and uh, support some of these great comic skaters that are up and coming, like I said, doing work that's way better than the mainstream right now. So uh, I want to thank you guys for letting me go through that whole schmeal. more creative. Yeah. Yeah, it's like all original, uh, like all original ideas, you know? Yeah, I was about to say a funny thing what alone is like you just take away, like don't even mention the creativity with all the campaigns you just showed off. Like don't even mention the creativity, the art or anything like that. Just content alone. The story alone is, and I, I'm not even a story writer like that. So every campaign you just showed, their storylines are much more like, well written by my storyline but still like just content alone is better than anything you're going to see out in the fucking mainstream or a good amount of it yeah i mean it's not a rerun i mean they're not it's not the 17 millionth batman movie or the you know the the fifth uh spider-man that's coming out (laughs) you know different spider-man you know it's like no this is something original okay with batman but i don't like reading batman saying that he's scared you know, yeah, I don't like reading. You know, like yeah, reading, I or like, I don't like reading non-Batman Batman. Or, or it's Batman like they to get a kiss or some shit like that, or <laughs> or they yeah, think dude. they're gonna shock us by making a character that's been straight for sixty years gay. It's like it, you're not shocking us; you're making us yeah. mad. We have no problem with gay characters. Look at the Authority. We love the Authority. Two of the main characters the are awesome. lovers. Yep. Yeah. We have no problem with that because they, they were gay characters to begin with. When you take a character like Wolverine or Iceman, who's been straight for 60 years since they were created, and then just make them gay or or change the gender or or change a character that's been white white to black just for shock value instead of just making a cool black character like Luke Cage, which we always loved, uh, yeah. Or the Black Panther, which we've always loved. You're not doing anything. You're not shocking us. You're just you're just changing things to change things. So, just make cool original characters, and they are what they are. Creatively bankrupt and desperate. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And so this is my uh, my little sketch of Roach Balls here, sucking on a nice booby because I saw him uh, trying to get his boob on in your uh, preview of your comic there. So. Yeah. That band-aid on the titty is fun. <laughs> so uh, I did the sketch. I fixed the sketch a little bit. Did the base colors. And then just added a little uh, ambient occlusion to it. Now I'm ready to, to paint. And uh, just talk about uh, comics or whatever. Uh, you working on anything right now, Matt? Yeah, I'm working on a uh, Rock and Roll Ninja page right oh, now. Oh, okay. Cool. Um I'm going to work on it for a few more minutes, and then I'm going to go downstairs and make dinner. And, um, dude, I had to sign an NDA on some insane shit. Uh-oh. Uh, video game stuff? Uh, can't say? Yeah. I could say, I could say that it's for fucking Fortnite. I could nice. say that it's, that it was, like, it's storyboarding and stuff like the, I some you know the people who were doing the national championship stuff that I did. Okay. Uh, they called me up and were like, "Hey, we need some storyboards and con- some conceptual stuff. Are you down?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'm down. Sure." Just thinking it was like gonna be like more like sports, kind of yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? Like I, I was like thinking like what what sport is about to like kick off. Like that they would like be like asking me for, it. and then they were like, "Hey, we're gonna send you an NDA before we we have this meeting," uh, and I was like, "Oh, this is different." 
<laughs> this is this is something different. Right? So I was like, yeah, sure. And so I signed it and sent it over. And um, and I saw what it was. And I was like, oh, this is fucking rad. Like, they only need me for like four days. You know, that's that's yeah. that's all it's going to be. But um, yeah, dude, it's like some Fortnite shit. Cool. And, and Epic. And so it's like, we're like talking about like what assets we can get from Epic and stuff. It's pretty fucking dope, dude. Nice, um, dude. Yeah, dude. But um, so I'm yeah, I'd like, like to do that, some of like that during the mornings. Shit. Like I'll wake up in the mornings and do that so that it doesn't like affect my my rock and roll ninja. Yeah, your page up stuff. Yeah. Mhm. Mhm. So are you already working, uh, Rich, on a, on a second book, or are you just you just doing all promotion right now? Uh, it's a bit of both. I, unfortunately, like all the promotion stuff has like kind of deterred me from working back on the pencils on the second book. I already started mm -hmm. on um, I'm like four pages in into the second book. So, and I wanted to. I thought, silly me, I'd have. <laughs> I thought I like during this whole thing of promotion and shit like that, and promoting, I'd have more time to work on that, but I haven't. So, like, yeah. I still have like a lot of shit to draw for the campaign itself. A bunch of thank you sketches. Uh, I'm doing um. Some more art tiers, which one I'm almost done with, and then there's like a couple paintings I want to do toward for the end of the campaign. Cause uh, I think that'd be pretty cool. If people have like a couple Sully paintings and shit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But right now I'm working on a commission for uh, B Rose for Cerebrum. So. What is it? Uh, B Black Rose Comics B Rose. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, I got. I'm you. working on a, a commission um, for his comic book. Now, have you had a bunch of people kind of hitting you up now that you kind of got out there for some art and stuff? Uh, yeah, I've had, uh, not a bunch, but I've had a couple. So, like, um, I'm going to be working shortly after this. I got to hop on. I got to do work for uh, Aardvark with uh, Aquila, his character. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working on that. And then uh, I have something in the plans later on for, like, the 6 by 6 and shit. But even before. Oh, nice. Was, yeah, before I started mm -hmm. even um, really promoting my comic and shit, like, uh, Neff, uh, Global Frequency, and and uh, Matt Fowler, like they tossed me loot, and I did some commission work for them, like way beforehand when I first started coming in here. So, off the yeah, bat, nice. like you know, already friendly. Matt with people they were Fowler out. is always the dude that's kind of ahead of everybody with the talent. Yeah, like he'll like hit up all like it was Rob Willis. He hit up me like way before I had anything else to do, and uh, like. I always say this, Matt Fowler is the coolest dude because if not for him, uh, I wouldn't have paid my rent or my the uh, electric bill a couple times if not for his commissions. Yep. And then it sucks too because some of that stuff I worked on for him never actually made it to print. But, you know, he paid me money and he's a definite supporter of, like, indie guys. So, yeah. Yeah. Love Matt Fowler. He don't fuck around. He don't mince words. So if anybody out there gets approached by him to do work for him and stuff, don't waste that dude's time. Cause nope, and he pays. Yes, he pays. Dude. He pays. Yeah. He pays promptly, and he's a trustworthy dude. So yep, yep. Go, Don't fuck work. with Matt Fowler. <laughs> Always work for Matt Fowler if yeah. you ask you. It's a good. It's a good bet. So, <laughs> and he's got his book out right now. Blue is it? Blue Tiger? What's it called? Tiger Blue. Tiger Blue. Blue. Tiger Blue. Yes, it has a blue tiger. It's Tiger Blue. It's a, that book looks freaking amazing. The artwork is beautiful. So Jose Garcia killing Jose it. Jose Garcia beautiful. is working on uh, Malin's book right now as well. So, or already finished? I'm not sure. Maybe already finished. So, so what is this thing on his head here, where the like little things come out? Is that just like his skin right there? Or? No, no, no. That's like a. Um... Uh, damn, you can see it kind of on my uh, profile pic, but uh, it's like a weird, uh, it's like part of a suit. So a suit's like blackish, but kind of got that like uh, processed red type of hue to it. So, so it's this not is like, red right here? Yeah, it's like, uh, okay. I don't know how to explain it. I drew it all fucking weird and shit. But, like you see it on the front cover. So like his, his mask is black, but it's got like, um, you know how like Venom you would see it'd be all black, but then there'd be that hue of like bluish or purple sometimes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like the same thing. Okay. I'll probably get it wrong, but I'll try to get it right. <laughs> you guys, I'm going to boogie. But, uh, Later, Matt. 
Thanks for having me on, Inks. Yeah, oh, no problem. Man, it's a pleasure just kicking it with you. Killing it, bro. Thank you, yeah, dude. buddy. Always. Always a pleasure. Always. I have fun making dinner, man. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's my that's my jam. Hell yeah, Hell yeah there guys. Sure. Peace, brother. Now, this he's a, this guy's Mexican, right? Who, Sully? No, he's no. not. He has no uh, no, no ethnicity. Yeah. Uh, oh, he should have just—he just, just should have just said he was, and he could get like extra points, man. <laughs> yeah, for the, uh, <laughs> no, I'll save it when we get uh, approached by ESG and shit like that. Yeah, get like, those funds. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> in the hood, bro. I'm Hispanic too, so I could probably get away with asking for that. Too. I am too. I, I don't sound like it, but I am. I'm from yeah. uh, my grandfather it. came from Mexico and worked at General Motors, and yeah. uh, I went. I remember I went down there to visit my great grandmother in Mexico, and she lived in like a really like a beautiful like house. They had like marble, everything, but there was like no indoor plumbing at all. Oh yeah. So it's like yeah, like an outhouse, and then I, only thing I kind of remember, because I was real young when we went down there, is uh, like I went into the creek in the back of her her yard, and there's a running creek. And I was playing it, and I came out, and I just had leeches all over me. It's like, oh! PTSD. Yeah, man. That's funny. But yeah, my grandfather was uh, came from Mexico, and he married my grandmother, and it was kind of a weird uh, combo because she was from Germany. Oh, shit. So, and it was all during that whole thing. So it was like with the Nazis and everything, yeah, and they yeah. got they got married, man. So that was really love, cool. Love sometimes, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so yeah. half of my half of my fr- family is all brown, and the other half is pale white. So it's a combo. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm uh, Puerto Rican and Dominican, so how those two got together is amazing. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. Each other like that. But. The food must be amazing, though, right? I avoid a lot of my family, honestly. So I oh, just... there you go. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're like too much alike. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, been, I haven't seen my parents or that side of the family in probably like fifteen years. So <laughs> yeah, and it's funny though because it's the same. It's like it's respectfully given for the most part. Like the like the parents don't hit me up either. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. I can dig that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a great childhood. So yeah, we definitely uh, we don't get along. So. <laughs> yeah. fucking art helps man like you see that too like art therapy that's a legit that's a legit thing man if it wasn't for art i'd be uh in all types of trouble no i don't know did you grow up in like a was there a poor situation like not a lot of money and stuff yeah thriving by and shit section eight housing welfare all that good shit gotcha see i was more like white trailer trash you know yeah. like yeah that's the same like, shit pretty much you know my dad was a drug local drug dealer Got busted, went to prison for five years. Ex Vietnam vet, completely abusive, just beat the shit out of me, you know, every day. And so, yeah. So, I, th- I, my escape really was like my grandfather was like my father, and he yep. would uh, bring me comic books. And that's why I love comics so much. Like, he, like, comics was my, like, escape from this, you know, fucked up real life. So, I'll always, uh, be glad that com- I, I got to get into comics and that it really helped me th- through being a kid. So, For sure. I've uh, definitely experimented with multiple art mediums. And uh, like yeah. my full time job, tattooing. And then, like, I've done art shows before and, like, made paintings. But Oh, you're a tattoo artist. Yeah, yeah. Um, really cool, man. Yeah, uh-huh. it's not too bad. But there, there is, honestly, messing with all different types of art mediums and experiencing that shit, there is nothing on level with uh, making comics. Now, granted, I feel like you have to have a type of mentality and patience and a hustle for it, but um, there's nothing like it, dude. It's like the best fucking medium there is, honestly. Right on. Well, that's good, like, because I hear, <laughs> I hear some people say, like, I hate drawing. It's like, you hate drawing, you make comic books. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a silly shit to say. Yeah, Somebody it's says, like, says, I hate drawing. Buy my comic. I'm probably not going to buy their comic. <laughs> Like if you hate drawing, then your drawing's probably going to look like shit. Yeah. Well, it's like a lot of... I know, like, uh, John Romita Jr. is like that. Like, he is like... It's like it's like a job. It's like going to work at the gas station for him. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just something I do, but... That sucks, too, because he's such a good artist. I know. And then, uh, <laughs> for, for me, it's just like... Like I said, I love... I, I can't wait. Like, I have a day job, and then 
I can't wait to get home and just start oh, yep. painting or drawing or anything that has to do with comic books. Or... I said this the other day. I forgot which stream I was on. But then I'd be like, um, you see food or something like that. Or you're anticipating something. Sometimes if it's like weed or a joint, like you get this weird, like almost like not salivating, but this feeling behind your jaw where you just want to fucking yeah. just get to it. And then uh, that's how I get when I'm ready and I'm prepped to start drawing and hit the table and start working on pages. Right on. I mean, the only thing that, I mean, I think probably two things I like better than comics is just like uh, sex and food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah. Smoking weed. I, I love smoking weed, so that's cool. There too. you go. Yeah. yeah. At least it's legal now. Like my dad went to jail for five years for it, so it's oh, like, yeah. it was such a dumb thing, you know. Yeah. Like let's ruin the family and stuff over something that it's not a big deal. It's like it's oh, that just gets legalized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, was it funner when it wasn't legal though? Like you get that little bit of like bad boy like feel like you know yeah. it's the same thing now if i'm like driving around with the girls somewhere smoking a joint i see a cop i still get the same type of paranoia as oh really we're taking like blunt rides in the you know back roads and shit and now it's like, oh it's okay like, but it's like the, the paranoia is still kind of there and then you're just like wait this shit's legal cops can't do shit so <laughs> can't do nothing to me man. Yeah. <laughs> it's still there so it doesn't matter <laughs> it's still the same essentially yeah my stupid dad was always messing with the cops. Like they, I remember once he got pulled over, and uh, uh, he tells the cop, "You know, I got a gun in the car. You know, it's a legal gun. I got a gun in the car." Yeah. And then the cop, like, he was a young cop, and he starts fidgeting around with his bullet with his vest. You know, oh, and my dad, my dad goes, "Don't worry, I shoot people in the face." <laughs> Next thing you know, of course, my dad's on the fucking asphalt with a yeah. foot in his neck. You know, it's like, you dumbass. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah that would happen, I, I would assume. <laughs> <laughs> fucking moron. <laughs> so, yeah, I grew up a, a real strange uh, childhood like that. So, I'm a. Uh... Oh, yeah, my dad was, uh, was definitely rough around the edges. My dad was a hood rat through and through. Still is, you know? Yeah. Still is. He's out there running a muck in the streets. So, like, with me, I was always, like, super embarrassed of my parents and what they did. Where Did you kind of have that, or <laughs> yeah, you just yep. didn't, yeah. Yeah, because uh, it was weird. Like, now, not so much, obviously, because you grow older and the shit makes yeah. you uh, part of you. But, so, like, I had a dad who's uh, still to the day is, like, a bad fucking uh, crackhead. Like, legit mm -hmm. crackhead. And, like, um... My mom's deaf, so obviously deaf people sound weird as fuck and they sound funny. So, yeah. like, uh, whenever, like, he had, like, I got in trouble in school and my mom would show up and I'd have, like, my cracked out dad and my mom who sounds like a fucking circus seal. It just, it was always weird, like, going to places with them <laughs> publicly and shit. Yeah. yeah it, was like, it, it, it made for an interesting childhood. Uh, yeah, it was with me. Like, all my, everybody knew that my dad was where you got weed and yeah. uh, meth from, like, he sold the weed and he sold the meth and everybody knew that and then you go to school and all the kids there know that you know <laughs> but it's been they would uh, fuck with you but it's like yeah you only know that because your parents are buying meth from yeah, my dad exactly you know <laughs> like, relax your mom, just, your mom blew my dad just for a fucking they hit a meth or a bag of meth or some shit yeah exactly it's <laughs> like it's like we well, make fun of me but you're it's like you only know that because my my dad sold your dad fucking you know, an eight ball the other day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So. But it was kind of cool because, like, all my all my brothers and sisters and me, you know how usually you, you kind of follow that pattern. We never, uh, we never were, uh, we ne none of us fell into the pattern. We all, like, got out of it. So we got lucky, I guess. We didn't, uh, we weren't the next generation of, trailer trash we actually went and tried to do something so but, oh, yeah. I'm, uh, very easily could that. have been though. <laughs> Every morning i wake up whenever i can remember while i'm brushing my teeth i give thanks for not ending up like uh like how yeah goes. we used to live uh out in the middle of the fort like because I, I lived in a small town and that's why really everybody knew who, who yeah. my dad was but we lived out in the forest like we out in the forest and uh 
we used to have to haul water and like there wouldn't be enough water to like take a shower or, oh, wow. or like or i'd have to like wash my my socks in the sink before school you know yeah, <laughs> just, like yeah. like and then you'd uh for me it was like my parents were super smokers like my dad would smoke like a carton of camel non-filters every day yeah. and so like you'd smell like smoke when you went to school like like you couldn't keep it off your clothes. Just <laughs> <laughs> I was like ah. Yeah, I remember my grandmother was a big like Marlboro smoker, and she'd get those like coupons where you cash them in and shit like that. And I remember going to like uh, Marlboro. <laughs> yeah, it was a fucking like uh, like second and third grade. The only kid going to school with the Marlboro windbreaker on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like yeah, camel. My dad would save the uh, <laughs> camel bucks. The the. Whatever, Joe Camel bucks. And so, like, I had that, like, a Joe Camel shirt yeah. and the jacket because he sent him in for stuff. You know, straight up fucking in second That's third grade, great, right? dude. Marlboro Windbreaker, like. Not oh, a shit, world. dude. That's goofy awesome. ass Six Flags Tasmanian Devil hat. It was just it was a shit show. Nowadays, they consider that, like, drip and style and fashionable and shit. Oh, yeah. I like it when, like, you see all these rich people trying to do, like, Wear like poor people clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, dude, you have no idea. <laughs> That's not oh, cool. <laughs> it wasn't cool, man. All I wanted was like a nice like Nike hoodie or something, you know, when I was a kid and I never had anything like that, but everybody yeah. else had that. Or Adidas clothes, you know, they had the Adidas uh uh jacket and shoes and everything. <laughs> like, I want some of that stuff. <laughs> I remember when uh, years ago, when a was it a Burlington Coat Factory or some shit came around town, and you know it was during the summer and shit. I went there, like scrounged up what money I have. I bought like this, uh, this fucking Wu Tang shirt. I thought it was the coolest thing. <laughs> Turned out it was a bootleg. So when I first wore it to school, I got ripped apart. I mean, Look at your bootleg Wu Tang shirt. Uh, I did that with uh, my parents bought me, and I thought they were Adidas. Yeah. And they were Adidas. Oh, no. And they were at the swap meet. And I, I was, like, <laughs> going to school night. I, did, I was, like, off oh, thinking I was all badass. Look at that, man. I got some Adidas. <laughs> what, they're like, what the fuck's Adidas? <laughs> <laughs> it's like spelled with the U-H-H at the end. Yeah, the I'm like, oh, man. It was, like, the oh, Mexican bootleg. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, you know, the Mexican people up there. You know, they would have like a leather belt and it had like Nike on it. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is the Nike, the Nike poncho. <laughs> 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 the Nike sombrero. <laughs> they didn't make a sombrero, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what. Definitely never the fashionable kid. That's what happens when you grow up poor and shit. <laughs> It's weird now. I don't. I don't care now. Probably just because of that. You like, eh, whatever. I don't care, man. It's like cool not to care now, though. It's noxious. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I was like that when I was a kid. I really cared when I was a kid. Oh know? yeah. <laughs> if I could meet my young, insecure kid self, I would punch him right in the stomach. Like, Tell him grow up, man. Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's not a big deal, kid. Yeah, I mean, because once you grow up, everything changes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so is this like, so this is just costume. It's not like a part of it is like uh, yeah, if anatomy, you know, um, like a gland or anything? No, 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 no. It's a part of this costume. So, yeah. I don't know how to explain it. It's hard to. Yeah, because I saw in some panels he had it, and some panels it didn't show up. Yeah, so it was it... weird, because like, the way it draws is just fucking weird. So suit is kind of like sketchy and shit, but it's not like a bald spot or a hole in the suit. Okay. It's just like a shine, pretty much, you know? So like, uh, if you want to put me on the screen real quick. Yeah, let's put you up here. Let's get on this. So, like... And then solo. See right here, like his, his skin tone, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's got like the, the brownish skin tone, and then his suit's all black, but then you got that hue, that shine, and it's like a processed pink or a processed red, not pink, just kind of a little bit on the magenta side, but yeah, and then it just kind of shines. So, you know how okay. like old school Venom would be like super black, but then he'd add the sheen or the shine, above yeah, it's gonna be kind of bluish. What do they call that? Like, like those beetles that have like that. Yeah. Shiny, like yeah. wing, yeah. So this is watercolor, though, so that's why it came out a little different. But then when you get to the, like, the inner pages and shit, 
the style switches up a little bit so it's like it's a little more scratchier you know like it's hard to start uh, yeah so it's a little more scratchier to match like the style and whatnot so it kind of looks like a bald spot but it's not just and like do a his uh his antenna come out of there uh yes yeah, but not specifically like they don't always fall on that so it depends on the angle that i'm drawing at sometimes okay. it'll just be black and then you see it popping out so it's okay. basically artistic interpretation you know? okay i'll probably do it wrong but i'm gonna try to do it right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i've loved every version that came out like the other day brian is kid I, this kid's young i don't know how old she is but she um she drew a cool ass like Sully, and he was all like little kid style, so it was awesome. Yeah, right on. <laughs> I seen one the other day. Ollie's brother drew one that was fucking amazing. He had five fingers, I believe, which Sully only has four, but it was still cool. Like I still love it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be the coolest thing to see. Like people take to your character, like you made this thing, and everyone's digging it. It's like yeah. that's cool, man. It's insane, and like the, what they're saying too is like, oh, he's so much fun to draw, and this and that, and like, wow, that's cool. Well, he's not, uh, he's not so hard to draw either. Like, so you don't really have to, uh, have like all this anatomy. And so he's like perfect for fan art stuff. Yep. Like for me, this is like the natural, I'm a cartoony artist. So that's like my natural start style to begin with. So I was like, oh yes, it's cool. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. I liked oh. it. The whole cartoony style is so much less stressful than working on, like, you know, the high rendered, like, perfect anatomy, semi perfect anatomy, and all that shit. And there's stuff like that I really love, but then there's stuff like that where the, all that extra anatomy and everything kills the, the action or whatever. It's like, yeah. it, it, it kills the, it just kills the feel of the drawing because it gets all stiff because they're yeah. worried so much about getting every little muscle right. I think you know. I think what definitely like puts that in the corner too. I could be wrong, but is the over rendering. Like um, sometimes a lot of thick lines, the black lines, a lot of the shit like stiffens the character almost, where they don't look like um, like they can move that quick. Or if you're trying to have a move quick, then a lot of that heavy over rendering and shit takes away from it, and it should look smooth yeah. looking. If that makes any sense. Now there's a few like like Del Kion. EVS, like a few of those, and even I, Rob Willis. Yep. Where that looks good. Like, it looks really good, but you just, you gotta be, that's gotta be your, you gotta be good at it. You can't yeah. just sit, sit there and over under, over under, and then it's yep. like, ah. Turn in line <laughs> weight and all that shit. <laughs> like I used to draw in a style that had such thick lines all the time, graffiti style. Just yeah. Thick lines everywhere, and then it just, uh, it just made the character look stiff and, as soon as I started like developing more into the roach balls and studying my favorite artists and like thin lines are where it's at because you can mess with it. You know, pieces up close in a panel, they're sitting there up close in the foreground, then you thicken out those lines and then, you know, and then play it off. And the shit looks so much better if you're messing with line weight instead of just having one consistent line throughout the whole thing. Yeah, definitely. So, me, I'm all about <laughs> over rendering. <laughs> so. <laughs> It's kind of my, but I, I'm more of a digital a digital painter. And before right. I did uh, comics, I was more into like children's books and stuff. Like that's what I uh, I wanted to be a children's book artist for right. a long time, and I wasn't able to break in. So, but uh, so I just got that. I, I I really wanted to learn how to render really well and stuff and lighting and and it was kind of at the expense of really learning how to draw correctly you know I, I was trying to i just wanted everything to look realistic and i didn't spend the time to to really learn uh uh i don't know draftsmanship i guess yeah so and now now that i'm older and i'm kind of set in my ways it's hard to go back and uh, get rid of that cartoony style you know as far as the the drawing part so i kind of render realistically but i draw I, uh, I draw a cartoon, yeah, so it's yeah. a, a weird combo. So. Yeah, I wasn't like definitely not knocking the over rendering because like uh, I'll definitely utilize it in my art too. But I like oh uh, yeah, not oh I I knew exactly I know what you're talking right, about right yeah because yeah. <laughs> the whole style's built on it when it's like you know you can still have a dope style that sticks out but you're utilizing uh, uh I don't know how to say it but like different things you know different approaches so your character can look. Uh, I don't know. I'm just fucking blabbering on right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. It's streaming. You're just trying to fill the space. 
<laughs> I did. <laughs> Like, uh, should I be talking right now? I don't know what I'm supposed to say. <laughs> I never get it streaming. Like, uh, I had my channel early on. It was hard, like really hard for me to try to figure out. Like, what do these people uh, <laughs> want to want to hear from me? I, like, I don't know. I'm just gonna say whatever I want to say now. <laughs> Worry about it after. Let's see. Like, I like boobies. Let's talk about boobies today, man. Let's talk about titties and nipples and all that stuff. That I like that. Let's go there. It's always good to use nipples. Sometimes, uh, you know, you wish your lady came with more than just, you know, two of them. Yeah, no, I could go for three. Like some of those sci-fi chicks with like three or four. I don't think you could have too many. But, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and finish this guy up. So you got another stream you got to get to pretty soon here? Uh, no, no, not today. I oh, was okay. Today. Oh. Yeah, no, I had to just okay. work on a lot of shit. So, and then I got my lady coming over later and I'm trying nice. to catch up on these commissions and shit. So, so you, but, so. you, you have like a regular streaming show that you, that you go on some, uh, weekly or? Yeah. Uh, for the most part, a uh, comics way every Saturday. Comics that, way every Saturday. And that'll switch, uh, that'll switch. So sometimes it's on Ollie's channel at the 656 or it's on B-Rose's channel. Or it's on um, Brian's channel sometimes, so they just switch it off. I don't do any live streaming on my um, on my channel. I just kind of keep that for like dirty, uh, like short draw vids, shit like that. Just uh, nice. throw it up there. I think when I start working heavily into my second book, doing the inking, then I'll start doing some more like live streaming, which you're doing like right now, pretty much. And just have yeah, because we got you know Frog G out, so I, I used to stream a lot, but. I, I backed off of it for a while because crazy stuff was happening in real, you know, real life yeah. sometimes uh, misses with you. So, but now it's like, yeah, I got to get that. This book has to do like, this is, I've been in comic skate, like I said, for a long time. And this is the book that has to do well for us. Yep. So, so I'm just going to put everything into it and yeah, yep. see what happens, yep. man. <laughs> exactly what you got to do. The more yeah. you do that, I think, you know, I feel like people will see, uh, They'll see the love you put into it, you know? They'll feel it. I am having... It's, like, different because I've worked on a lot of other people's work, and it's just a different feeling, you know, when you're doing it for yourself. It's yeah, like, definitely. It's is. like, wow, this is... I made this up, and it's going to be a comic book. That's cool. <laughs> definitely understand that because uh, you know a tattoo, it's... um At the end of the day, you're just going in, you're clocking in, you're clocking out, and then uh, you're doing shit for everybody else. They're your... Every, every customer is your boss, more or less, and yeah, basically over your shoulder critiquing. I want this, I want that, and then you gotta uh, really just funnel your whole skills and creativity into just that. And a lot of times, you're not even flexing; you have to dumb it down a lot, you know. So, so that your dream kind of is that like your future? What you'd like to see happen is full time comic book stuff. Yeah, I would love to just keep working on. Uh, you know, obviously, still do tattoos here and there, I guess, but just not mm -hmm. like a full time thing. I just mainly want to just keep pursuing this and see how far I can take it. Now you don't you don't hate your day job? No, not at all. Okay, so you kind of like what you're doing. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. The customers sometimes will. Uh, it, the customers are very hard to deal with. I will say that not all of them. I can I can imagine because yeah. I do uh, I do plumbing for a living and right. even just do people are just nuts, dude. Dealing with the public will make you lose all faith in humanity. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> very very like um like i don't know how to say like making a comic i feel like i can make a rocket shit and then uh with the tattooing and shit i feel like a lot of people just want me to plug in their toaster you know yeah so, and it's just like uh sometimes it get a little heavy but other than that like it, it's an awesome job to have you know so i'm definitely appreciative of it so this is my man lucius that just popped so, in he is yo the, man how's it going the up, cash Let's grab go. Fan art aficionado draws one of the best dick writers you'll you'll see out there. <laughs> <laughs> True that. What's How's up, it going, man? Good, good. How about yourself, brother? Doing all right. Nice. What Have about you guys you? met yet? No, uh, I've never been on stream with Rich. Yeah. Well, Rich, this is the first time I met Rich. This is Lucius. Look at that. Just meeting uh, new people all around today. Yeah, man. Right. Congrats on your campaign, dude. Thank you, brother. Thank you. It's uh pretty it's quite shocking <laughs> just trying to keep my head down not uh, not let it float away and just get the work done you know right 
that trailer is pretty dope, man. How, did you put that together yourself, or no? Did that was my out? homie, uh, Dying Days of YouTube. Mm. So uh, you can, he's got an awesome uh, YouTube channel. You can check out. And does a lot of cool. He's going to be doing more trailers for more people too, which is pretty fucking awesome. But I, I came across him. He hit me up, and he had this. Uh, he's got this cool character called Hogan the Bogan, and he'll mm-hmm. do these little skits or these shorts where he's promoting people's comics just out of nowhere. He'll just send you this video, and awesome. he's done one for Company Men, for Shantan Jetty's um, Most Pharaoh, and uh, who else did he do one for? Uh, there's a couple other ones, but he did one for me, and um, they're all excellent. And he sent it to me, and it was just it was amazing because it just broke it all down in a nutshell. It was like, this is what this comic's about. And I never really held the conversation with this dude, and it felt like he, he knew it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then uh, I had another homie who I knew from back in the days that I did tattoo work on, and he does, like, videos and he'll shoot commercials and shit. And I wanted him to work on a trailer but that just didn't work out and he just didn't get back to me so I'm like what the fuck mm-hmm. but then shortly after that disappointment like dying days had shot me that video and i was like no this is perfect this is meant to happen because this is the dude to work on my video so yeah man I, just like taking your drawings and like bringing them to life like yeah. I, it's like your campaign page is like uh just seems like it's curated like all the way like even even your like text blocks and everything i like i love how you're like chill out yo <laughs> like all this all this <laughs> stuff man like it's uh you and uh kami mark like you you both like at least have like a brain for like putting together a really solid campaign package and marketing it uh dude and congrats man it took off uh you know thank you brother that's yeah. uh that's awesome to hear because like you said this is my first campaign so i didn't know what the fuck i was doing and uh obviously i had good people in my corner to like bounce off ideas and have them check it out and you know give it the once over and whatnot so everybody's uh yeah uh, everybody's had nothing but awesome things to say and i'm pretty like i'm uh shocked and humbled because i'm not like good i'm not technologically adept i'm uh, kind of retarded when it comes to that type of shit so <laughs> yeah, it's awesome Me too. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to lucius not much, man. Uh, actually, I, I was kind of wondering, are you coming back into the live streaming game, or did you just feel like, for the hell of it? No, just, I'm uh, I'm coming back after, yeah. you know, a few years. It's like, yeah, it's time to get back into it. And it is kind of a hassle, you know, because oh, like, yeah. you can't just sit down and draw. No, you got to make a thumbnail. You got to set it up. You got to schedule it. You got to. So, yeah, oh, it's, I, a, it's I, I a know, lot of man. Work. Yeah. And I, like uh, having done it like like very lightly myself, but <laughs> it's it's very humbling, and you also you get a, a new respect for the people that do this on the regular, uh, no matter what their level is at, just because it's it's time out of your day, uh, and to, to come in with energy, no matter what, is is probably the most taxing thing about it. Hmm. That's it's too like when I was doing my regular show, I always felt like I was kind of being a little fake when you come in it's like you know i feel like shit today i don't really want to stream oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah if you feel like complete shit yeah i'd recommend just like not happening tonight man yeah. or, or you or you need your guest people to like really do the heavy lifting yeah man and then like you do a show and then you don't get very many people in there but then sometimes mm-hmm. you do a show and there'll be a ton of people and you're like Wow, the one with uh, only a few people was, was probably a better show, but now we got a whole bunch of people. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. I don't know what the magic formula is, but I'm just going to do it. Uh, and I'm sure, like, Rich, too, probably just try to get on as many uh, uh, streams as possible to get that book promoted. Is uh, Yeah, it's pretty much the plan. Like, uh, especially, well, sometimes. Uh, yeah, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, my apologies. Uh, yeah, because I don't, everything's, I'm taking everything on myself, like with the drawings and shit. So I noticed, like, when you're working with a team, it's obviously a lot easier. And one of you or maybe a couple can handle the whole streaming thing, but that's, it's like crazy. That's a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, I'm going to be working with. Uh, Jason Bascom, Unhinged. Have you, you, you met Jason already? Yes. Yep. Yep. I've been on yeah, a streaming cool with him. Yep. Yeah, super cool, dude. And so it's it is definitely easier when you when you're doing like a, a partnership on stuff and you can split some of the the load. And when I'm not promoting, he can be promoting and things like that. Yeah. So 
And so, yeah, I'm just going to try to get on as many streams as possible, start this thing back up again, hopefully get my channel up and running good like it was before. So, we'll see what happens. See what happens. So, what what am I looking at? Like, what, what is, uh, what's so going this, on here? So, this is Roach Balls, and he's just... I didn't draw the rest, but he's just, like, really working this titty. This, like, <laughs> like to the point of, like, where the titty's just mangling in his mouth. And Who, Whose titties you got? What? Um, could be anybody. Could be, uh, <laughs> use your use your imagination. I'm not sure. I have just been introduced to the character today, so I'm not, uh, I know he likes, like, big fat lady with no teeth titties, so it could yeah, be anybody. Started. Yeah, he's a brand new character, honestly. He's, like, uh, he's just very uh, rambunctious, and you can't trust him. So it doesn't it doesn't matter what type of titty, really. <laughs> so is there, what's is his, there like what's a his, ping? What's that? There, go ahead. Is there a ping pong show going on or something with the uh, the white ball? Like, is this like strip club action going on here? Ah, uh, no. This is just my lighting scheme. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, I like to do a test ball so I can test my lighting scheme and yeah, what you're not looking. You know what you can't see is the uh, the stripper, the, the edge of the yeah. paper that shot that ping pong ball at him. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, she shot it out of her uh, out of her hoo hoo there. Yeah. <laughs> my dad used to tell me stories that when he was in Vietnam, he'd go and there'd be like he would just tell me all these crazy like you go to a strip club in Vietnam and it would just be like the craziest stuff you would even imagine you know like women uh, like getting spun around on a pole and then lit, like spinning around on top of some do some like phallus thing or something just <laughs> crazy stuff man They're like wow we don't have that over here <laughs> you know sounding wild yeah so uh what's the story be do you have like a what's the the general is he like a, a superhero is he like an no. anti-hero yeah he's not even uh i feel like even anti-heroes are kind of like have some type of you know good streak to them they just don't like the good boys club type shit but now this whole comic i mean the whole plot in the first comic is very like simple it is part of an over uh reaching like art story art but it wraps up nicely i feel like in every book that well this book and every book i plan to come out with after so this story is pretty simple you meet sully kukaracha and um, he gets into a beef with a punk ass street gang, and that's like pretty much the first uh, the first book. And you get an intro of the environment, you get an intro of him and shit. But it's like the beginning of a like the villain's journey, I like to call it. So not so much the hero's journey, but the total opposite. So, so he's very oh. much the, not a good dude. And um, <laughs> oh, yeah, nice. so he's very. And even if he's not trying to purposely start some shit, no matter what he does, is it ensues in chaos just happening. You know, so nobody's gonna nice. like what he's doing and he's just not a good character and then eventually like the whole plots to like you know eventually he starts gaining some footing and causing more trouble in the environment he's in so the environment is called cat shit island that's a city that you know yeah <laughs> dude the greatest <laughs> opening line like cat in, shit in, island yeah <laughs> like what yeah, the homie arrogant eight did the voiceovers on that he has a dope uh, youtube channel as well where he does like comic book reviews and Makes him very entertaining and shit. A lot of character that dude, but um, he did the voiceover and it's crazy because his voice is not like he can just switch it up too so well. So he gave it that whole like, uh, grind. Um, what do they call those type grindhouse type of like feel mm -hmm. B movie type shit. So, but yeah, no, uh, yeah. So what you got to the hill villain's journey? So like, if you I had to uh, sum up Sully's character with three people, I'd like to uh, kind of sum it up to um. Old Dirty Bastard from the Wu-Tang Clan, <laughs> uh, Gru the Wanderer, and uh, Sun Wukong. I don't know if you guys know of the mythological Monkey King. So uh, those are his three characters pretty much summed up. So he's like a very uh, mischievous type of character. That's not good at all. Nice. Now, is like it like a miniseries that you're doing, or...? You thinking like ongoing? No, it's just gonna be ongoing. So oh, uh, cool. Like I have no. Uh, like I like I love this character. There's a lot of shit that I want to do, and there's like so much stuff I could do with this world. And so like I have so many stories, or at least this one long ass story that I want to tell. You know, Sully's a crazy character. He's got to piss off 
you know, more people. More shit has to happen. I wanted to have a baby's mama situation. (laughs) 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 Nice. I wanted to uh, do gets in all types of fucking hell. Yeah, what up? Good stuff. Yeah, so if you're going to yell anything, yell that loud and proud. Oh, I want to thank my sister too for being in the in the fucking up in the chat too. Thanks, kiddo. But uh, yeah, and oh, I want cool. to like start his own gang. I want to do a bunch of cool shit. So he's got a lot of stuff to do. And like, it's so weird when I first started writing out this story. I wanted to cram so much shit in this first book, and it just didn't work out that well. You know, so it's like you had to take out a lot of shit, and like, so to make the story just flow better. And um, I'm happy with the way the story came out, but it's weird. Like, you think you want to cram up a bunch of crazy shit, and it just doesn't work out that way. So now I have just crazier shit that I want to say and or tell and draw in the second book and the third, fourth, fifth. Basically, I have enough story for 10 books. Oh, wow. Great. Yeah, that's how I am. I have uh, like three arcs planned out for uh, my... I have another character called Metal Mayhem Rockboy, which will be my first solo deal. It's coming out right after Frog G, and I have like three books planned out ahead of time. So, But uh, that kind of stuff, too, it's like... I, I kind of want the first one to kind of end not on a cliffhanger in case it doesn't do well. And mm-hmm. Then I can kind of decide like, all right, I'm not, I'm not gonna make the other one, and but at least this book is ended at a good spot. So, yeah, that's the tough part too. You want to leave it because everybody likes cliffhangers, and you want to leave it on a cliffhanger. But you know, us making up our own, making our own shit, investing so much time is like it takes a lot longer than pumping out books every month. So you got to keep that person like invested and want to come back so that cliffhanger shit is like i found it super hard to do it's like all right you want to leave them on something and keep them back but you don't want to leave them on so much of a cliffhanger where they're just waiting so long and they're like all right fuck this book i'm done oh my wacom is giving me trouble it's like all these like yeah i don't know if you guys deal with that but like on the pc like photoshop and your drawing tablet none of that stuff wants to get along with windows and Oh, no. <laughs> everything fights everything else. So, have to restart that. Yeah, it just freezes up sometimes. Now, do you ever plan on selling the uh, original art pages? Um, not for a long time. I, I uh-huh. like I, I'll stare at that book. It's a badass fucking book, and <laughs> I just can't find myself to uh, get rid of it. I am selling, uh, you know, other original pieces of art. Like I have these uh, Sunday strip type of, you know, landscape like comic boards. Like they mm-hmm. do in the funny papers and shit. And on my Patreon, I had three of those strips up. And so, like, um, I am going to get rid of those. So, those will be making art tiers. I think next week I'll put them up. And because uh, I know how much people want the original pages, but I just can't seem to, uh, I can't get rid of uh, my original shit. I'll show it to you why, like, why I don't want to get rid of this shit. I'll be right back. Right. <laughs> so, you working on anything right now, Lucius? Uh, not really, not really, not man. Not really? Uh, I don't know, I've been, I've been kind of demotivated. Um, I don't know, yeah. just, just the, the real world just is, <laughs> is getting too, too much, man. Um, yeah. Th- there needs to be some serious distraction or something. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to right bring now, it down, man. bring the mood down, but yeah. yeah. It's, for me uh, right now, this is kind of like that distraction yeah. for me. It's mm-hmm. like, I got this, uh these comics going on now so uh got yeah, frog g out there which is awesome <laughs> it's a good distraction though that shit keeps you fucking sane. you know what it is too is like the world's getting just even crazier and then it seems like everybody's like a resolution against that craziness is just as crazy if not more so it's just like you know fuck the outside world i'm just gonna get lost and just doing art and paying attention to the few relationships important things in my life and everything else in the world is just fucking <laughs> I need to start paying attention to, uh, like, when I see a comic on uh, Twitter, I need to just go over because I almost missed this comic. I just didn't, like, go look at it. And the minute I looked at it, I'm like, oh, this thing is so awesome. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. what am I? So, yeah, I need to pay more attention to that and forget about all the, tr- well, to a point, all the real world drama that you can. <laughs> Ignore my uh, crusty, crackhead looking demeanor right now. <laughs> I'm all fucking scrubbed out Sunday fucking service clothes. All right, bam. So I don't want to get rid of this shit. I love this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so if I, like, 
I do get rid of it, then it, it's so funny because this is thick, six, all 68 pages, and then you print it out and it just comes out like that then. Yeah, yeah. Bullshit. But anyways, like, yeah, I can't, I don't want to give this, I don't want to. So those are all comic boards in there? Yep. Nine nice. by 12, these are all the originals. Yeah. So it'd be awesome, very hard. Man. Like, I can't, like, I sell one for a couple bucks and then it's like this whole thing's fucked and I'm just like, I can't just. Nah, nah, dude. Them. Like, this sounds stupid and, like, idealistic, I guess, but at some point, like, if I do get rid of this, I want to get rid of the book, you know, and just sell it and not break it apart. Or, like, donate it to a museum when comics are considered, like, high-end art in the future, and we're all considered, like, you know, important artists and shit. Yeah, dude, that's yeah. so cool. I like that. I don't want to get rid of this shit. I can't. But that's the I, thing about working digital. You don't have anything cool like that. Yeah. <laughs> But other art will be made available. I'll have some new original art shit and stuff. So just not those. Sorry guys. Very cool, man. Sorry. I get yeah. into painting and my brain stops for a second. <laughs> Dude, I can't talk and like draw at the same time. Like it's it's two different sides of my brain trying to work it's just like nope doesn't happen i don't know how you do it yeah, that's tough I'm, I'm over here penciling but i've been penciling like a little bit at a time <laughs> like mm -hmm. we started like i'll just like align erase it do the line again chat and then, uh, that's about well it. mine's digital so i can change you know and when i the way i paint is very exploratory like so i'm all like i'm I may change stuff completely. Who knows? So it's I don't worry too much. But then uh, you kind of get that where like you just space out like and forget that you're like even doing anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really I'm enjoying that painting this character. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to do him up right, make it really cool. <laughs> Put it up. Yeah, appreciate it. It was fun too drawing a character with four arms. At first, I thought it was gonna be a pain in the ass, but like, it's more, that I guess was the great part. Is like, oh, he has four titty gripping hands. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things too, I was like, oh damn, like this might be a lot more work to do and shit. And they tell you too, like, you know, you always want to make your characters kind of as simple as possible, you know. So I'm like four arms. Am I like putting myself in the corner? But then I realized too, in one panel, I can have them do. So many different, uh, four separate action scenes, just about maybe five or six different like sets of action in one panel than it would take to like break it down in several panels because he has four arms. So yeah, like, my oh, first cool. idea was to have just all of his arms doing something else, like, yeah, have like a but I didn't know exactly what kind of character he was like, so I was gonna have him like have a blunt and a, a needle and a Fucking all kinds of different <laughs> shit you know, in his hands, and I'm like, oh, I don't know if what, exactly what kind of character he is, so I won't do that. But it's like I know he likes titties from that one, so yeah. I'll just have him like monking on a titty. <laughs> that titty action going on. He likes titties. I like titties. Lucius likes titties. Who doesn't? So like, like, who doesn't like fried chicken? Who doesn't? Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> you know, you guys don't uh, like the titties. <laughs> <laughs> I think even they do. I think I think even they have like they a admire them. Yeah, yeah. They're like they like see they see the future where they could go with it. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like the no go zone is like what's below the belt for them. You know, like yeah, that that's the part. But I think I think they still like they, a good pair of titties. They can appreciate like it, but they just they don't want to touch it. They, they can appreciate it though. Like you know, some shit's going down. Like uh, true romance. You know, you got titties over there but you're, you're not even paying attention to the titties you know you've seen true romance right yeah drexel yeah. <laughs> what i haven't what the hell is true romance i haven't seen that. uh it's a tarantino movie uh is it, it okay. it's um gary oldman plays this like hood uh white roster you, dude yeah yeah and and it's just like one of the best characters you've ever seen and like uh He's like this guy's coming to kill him because he's uh, got this prostitute girl that he won't let go of, and uh, like he's, he's doing this thing like uh, he has porn playing off to the side, and he's like 
Now, <laughs> you kind of worry me because I got a big, big pair, pair of titties over there, but you're just staring at me. And it, it, it's a great, like, I mean, Tarantino's known for, like, the dialogue scenes and everything. And uh, it's, it's just, like, one of the best. You, you owe it to yourself to just YouTube it and, and watch just for that bit uh, of yeah, that scene. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, that's a good got movie. Me, got me now. That one part where the mafia guys, like, walk up in his dad's, like, trailer. And then uh, they're being oh, like yeah, yeah. all old school Italian racist. And then the, <laughs> the guy gives him a breakdown about where, like, uh, what does Sicilians come from? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's just brutal, dude. It's such a good scene. It's fun. Typical, like, Tarantino, you know, dialogue and shit. So it's funny as hell. Yeah, Lucius, you're kind of a big movie guy, ain't you, Lucius? Uh, I mean, I like I don't quiz me on shit. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to know names or production like you you go to uh brian Criscow, you really want to like get a breakdown of stuff but uh i i i can enjoy movies but lately man it's it's hard to find one that i like i actually did dig the uh the new the batman movie um yeah it's, it's i didn't think hard i was up, but i did like it i hate yeah, to and, admit it i wanted to hate it though i was um, like i really wanted to hate it <laughs> i yeah. was like I mean, I don't think uh, Robert Pattinson was really like great or anything, but I liked how they just did the whole thing, how they they decided to go about doing Batman. And there's like some meme out there uh, of or meme picture of how the movies keep getting darker and darker. And I'm like, no, this movie like did it right, where you're, like he's like coming out of the shadows, like out of nowhere, like you, it, you really have to wonder like where is he at at any given point like that's his that's his like really biggest advantage i don't like the i didn't like the whole like batman's going broke kind of thing and stuff i yeah, i don't know i like i like my batman rich and being able to have all the cool gadgets and everything that he wants i th i thought they were kind of hinting at uh he's forgotten to do the bruce wayne part of the deal like yeah. he's so focused on it and and that was sort of the whole reason why things sort of devolved as they did like maybe if he had stepped in more towards this organization his dad was tied to this might not have gone down the way it went down like there, there's still an importance to it uh i thought that was like an undertone that they're doing to it but i i love that they just didn't really waste time on like backstory like yeah. it was just kind of yeah. like they dropped right in and just hit the ground running like not not one minute on oh my parents were killed in an alleyway or anything just hit the ground running i didn't like how they were kind of trying to uh like uh, how do i say it like like his love for his dad but then he has to find out that his dad kind of did some like shady shit it's like uh i don't know i kind of like the the uh, illusion that his dad was like this uh pretty clean guy like stand up guy yeah well, he still kind of was. It was more like moment of weakness. I, I just don't know about introducing his mom to like crazy, like she was in the Arkham yeah, Asylum like, herself. Like asylum, I'm just that was eh, a strange. Twist. I I yeah. I do like how they're trying something different. It's not just rehash of everything you've ever seen before. I just don't know how they plan on fitting it in, because they're still moving forward with like the Flash, Aquaman, like characters from before, but this is like an entirely different version of the batman than what they had in the justice league movies well aren't they doing that with spider-man too or like are they gonna have like different spider-man franchises i think they're gonna yeah exploit the whole multiverse thing to it and, and flash is probably gonna be their breakaway like their fracture point for that and the the dc line and all that i'm sure that's how they're gonna do it yeah i'm not i haven't seen the new batman and i'm not like a super big batman fan like i can respect the character and shit and a lot of the other cool that renditions that came out but yeah. uh just hearing that his mom in that movie was like in the hot like in the mental institution and shit like i think that sounds kind of cool actually <laughs> it, makes, like, <laughs> it makes it give a reason to why like bruce wayne was like i mean granted your parents like got popped and shit like that and that's gonna fuck you up but just that reason why like all right instead of just seeking therapy and just being angry and beating up people at a bar like this motherfucker went and dressed up as a giant bat and hopped yeah. around the mm -hmm. roof. So the fact that his mom was crazy is like, oh, okay, this is where you got your crazy from, buddy. Like, okay, that makes sense. So if I ever came out with like some type of Batman movie or some shit, I would want to mix it up where it was like the old Adam West version, 
but uh, with mixed like the style of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, but like the the Crank movies too, Crank One and Two. I don't know if you guys ever seen those. Yes, yeah, yeah. Super fast paced and just insane. Like I'd want to mix all that up in one Batman movie and just <laughs> make it super like <laughs> fucking nuts. Yeah, it really. I did it. Batman's a lot life. of people liked the Batmobile. I didn't like it. It just looked like a regular car. Um, yeah. I like I like I like Batman's gadgets to be like all cool and high tech because it makes them almost like the uh, 007, you know. Yeah, yeah. It gives him that extra advantage too, just knowing that he's got all that fancy shit. You know? But it is good to have him uh, uh, be a little bit uh, vulnerable too. Like you want him, you want Batman to be able to get his ass kicked, you know. Yeah. <laughs> or else, why? Why would you care? Oh man, there was uh, I I was like, how do you sell him living through that that scene where he's like uh, got the flight suit, and like he he just takes like a headshot to oh yeah yeah I was just like no he's fucking dead man <laughs> he's dead he's dead I mean they at least sold like he got fucked up from it um the the Batmobile I I would say it wasn't like um all that grand like I I think the uh, Christopher Nolan and the Tim Burton one are like still above it, but I did dig like the chase scene. Like I thought that was like the best action part of the whole thing, and I, I loved uh, Colin Farrell's Penguin. Oh, you did like how they did the Penguin? Yeah, I, I like that they made him like more true gangster. Like, like yeah, this I guess is it a dude. I, makes I more sense. A, huh? I would be afraid yeah. of coming up against. Like he was, he was like hardcore. Like it seemed like. Uh, uh, I compared it to like Sopranos, like Capo kind of thing, and and uh, I love the the part where like he's dealing drugs right under Batman, <laughs> like you know. yeah, right in front of him, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Damn, yeah Batman, <laughs> Batman sitting there talking to the penguin, and the penguin's like like counting out drugs to give to, to be to be uh, distributed right in front of Batman. <laughs> no big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's just business as usual. <laughs> But yeah, like him, him like uh, just, just like freaking out, being chased, and like the only thing that was very on Batman is like, dude, you just like probably killed two, three dozen people <laughs> in this car chase. Like, <laughs> oh it, yeah, it, that's so crazy. True, yeah. You're just like, there's no way. Like Batman would just be like, all right, I'll, I'll find him later. I'll, I'll track him down later. But they they totally went for the action scene in it, and it's just like, dude, you just like to get this guy, you walked over the corpses of like. 30 innocent people. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Batman! <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, did you get, did either of you watch that new Reacher show on Amazon? Mm-mm. No. I've been hearing so that, things about it. But... That was, I mean, it was good, but that was another one where it's like, there's no way he survived, like, what he went through. Like, he gets hit in the head with, like, freaking cast iron and, sh- and shit it's like <laughs> there's no way dude that dude's dead mm-hmm. or or they made it unbelievable the other way because that dude in that show is so big and muscular and then he just happened to get his ass kicked by this little tiny skinny dude like this beanpole guy <laughs> like beats the shit out i was like no way there's just no way that th- <laughs> he would just kill that dude it's no way <laughs> so but uh yeah it's actually it's pretty good it's got a good story I'm gonna watch the second season, but even though they usually screw up the second season of everything, it's always yeah, they get yeah. going good. And season two, it's garbage. I can't say I've been watching anything new like that. I've just been catching up, like watching old shit on uh, Tubi. I love Tubi. The selection they have is like oh yeah, pretty fucking cool. Just old grimy movies. But, uh, I can't embarrassingly. Like what kind of stuff? Uh, what's that? What kind of stuff? Well, like old 80s and shit, like they just put up some trauma films. So Toxic Avengers up there. Uh, oh, Return nice. to Newcomb High is up there. Oh, so that's yeah. a cool fucking movie. They have uh, Bad Taste. I love that movie. A lot of cool shit. A lot of cheesy movies up there. Yeah. I always go back like and watch the... Like I think I've been going through and just watching a lot of the old 90s movies and stuff. And the... I like a lot of 80s movies that weren't very popular, even the 80s. Like. Oh, yeah, uh, like the Bloody Heroes is like one of my all-time favorite uh, movies and fucking Maniac but... Cop Two specifically. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> one was I, three was in, eh, but part two was fucking amazing. <laughs> Maniac cop. Yeah, like all those weird. old horror movies too were like crazy. Dude, like to the, fucking the reanimator, the leprechaun. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, yeah. <laughs> he walks into the some... precinct and just uh, ha- fights all the cops and he like grabs one and throws him through all the like the office like stalls and windows and shit. It was just it was such a cool fucking scene. Yeah. Wait, man, yeah. I gotta jump out. Uh, dinner just got here, so uh, thanks for having me on. It's good to see you back on the air. Uh, best thanks, of luck, man. Rich. Uh, oh, oh, and you, before I go, um, Forsaken Gods Two, Fresher Luke's thing closes out tomorrow. Just wanted to throw that out there. He'd probably kill me if oh, I uh, yeah, didn't yeah, mention yeah. it. So uh, yeah, that's that's definitely a project that's worth backing if uh, anyone hasn't yet. But uh, tomorrow's the last day. He's not messing around with uh, any, like, in demand or anything. So, yeah, thanks for having me on. And I uh, hope to catch you guys around. Uh, take it easy, guys. Definitely. Yeah, nice later, man. Yeah. Yep. And I just want to thank everybody that's be- that's been on and off since we started. I know it's gone a little long. Uh, probably going to go ahead and wrap it up just because this is going to take me probably a lot more hours to finish anyway. So, uh but I'll post it up on Twitter and tag you in it. Uh, oh yeah. You can do it. I'll uh, I'll send you a high res. You can do whatever you want with it, dude. Uh, yeah, I get, for like, promotion. So, many good, so much good fan art. I have like yeah. so much ideas and shit I want to do with it. So yeah, so stacking them. Do whatever you want with it, and appreciate uh, it. I appreciate you uh, not caring that I kind of do it because I'm using it for cross promotion for what I'm doing too. That's kind of my promotional plan because I get a lot of views whenever I do fan art. So yeah, just use the fan art to. Co- cross promotion my new book and plus i just love this <laughs> dude i love it i think it's i think it's brilliant i think you're doing a, a great job i'm glad that you were able to get uh evs's eye and get some attention on it and, yeah that was pretty cool <laughs> uh, it's very cool man and uh, it's great to meet you and i hope like uh I'm, i know we're traveling the same circle so i'm sure we'll be on some other streams together and stuff uh and uh yeah it's great to meet you and uh, we can do it again man Oh yeah, same thing, brother. Likewise, I appreciate the invite. I'm humbled by it, and I fucking amped off this uh, fan art you're doing. Roaches are naturally invasive, and they're just everywhere. So this just makes sense that, you know, I'm loving all this art coming out and all cross promoting and whatnot. So the yeah. plan is like eventually down the future, I do want to have like some cool crossovers with people, and it just makes so much so much sense for this roach. So there's a oh, couple yeah, in the talks awesome. right now, but we'll see. Yeah, it'd be awesome. Uh, email. Talk to you later about having a little cameo appearance in one of my books or something. That'd be cool. Have them in a crowd or crowd scene or something. Just to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm about that. Fuck yeah. And I want to thank the chat. Thank you, Comicsgate. Remember to go over to Indiegogo, Back Roach Balls. The link is in the description, along with all the other books that I like right yeah. now, along with Goblin Girl. And uh, just there's a lot of great books out right now, and Comicsgate is killing it. Please go over and sign up for Frog G mailing list. Uh, that's going to give uh, Jason and I a good indication of uh, how well this thing is going to go. So if you could sign up for it, if you could retweet uh, when we put out promotional tweets, follow everybody, follow Rich, follow uh, Matt Barr, follow all of us on Twitter uh, to stay up to date with the, the latest happenings. Uh, and we will see you guys next time. Thanks for dropping by. Wow. Peace.